The Nigeria Center for Disease Control has announced 260 new positive cases of coronavirus in the country. NCDC disclosed this in a tweet on Sunday night, bringing the total number of confirmed cases in Nigeria to 12,486. According to the health agency, Abia State recorded the highest number of infections for the day in the country with 67 cases, while the Federal Capital Territory and Lagos State had 40 and 38 cases respectively. The novel coronavirus has killed at least 400,581 people since the outbreak emerged in China last December, according to a tally from official sources on Sunday. At least 6.9 uh, cases of coronavirus have been registered in 196 countries and territories. Of these, at least 3.30 are now considered recovered. The tallies using data collected by EFP from national authorities and information from the World Health Organization probably reflect only a fraction of the actual number of infections since several nations are testing only symptomatic cases or the most serious ones. Joining us live is Dr. Chris Akpa, who is a medical practitioner and member of COVID-19 Rapid Response Team, IMO and Ebo State. Good morning, Dr. Akpa. Good morning, Ma. Thank you for joining us. Now, we read of the Zazao Emirates Council in Kaduna State raising alarm over the growing number of COVID-19 patients at the Amadabello University Teaching Hospital in Zaria and saying they are overwhelmed. But it seems that all they had uh, to begin with is a 20-bed facility donated by the government of Kaduna State. How would you rate our ongoing preparedness in that light? Yeah, I think uh, the ongoing preparedness uh, needs to be stepped up because the number of cases are increasing uh, every day and uh, health facilities are being overwhelmed. Currently, the NCDC has also recommended that uh, some cases that are not uh, very severe can actually be handled at home so that pressure can be eased off the health facilities and the more critical cases can be focused on in the health facilities for mm. care. So I think the government also has done well, or they need to step up and add some more efforts to the level of preparedness mm -hmm. in terms of uh, building isolation centers, equipping them, training uh, personnel that will be able to man these health facilities and provide the needed care mm. for the COVID-19 patients. All right, Doctor. Crazy. I mean, as one who is in the rapid response team, it is one thing to be caught on the back foot, uh, but what are we doing to make up for lost time? Are you seeing any innovative thinking at all? Yeah, yeah. There are some in There's a problem with that connection. Thinking. Okay. Step of activities in that line because uh, preventive measures are actually key in this fight. There's anyhow we can break the chain of transmission, and this can be driven by stepping up the risk communication and community engagement so that uh, the attitude and behavior of uh, people can be changed towards COVID-19 so that we can stop the cases from increasing. We can stop community transmission. So I think in the line of risk communication and uh, community engagement, uh, a lot of improvements have been seen in that line to break the chain of transmission. Also, uh, the government has also helped in the line of training personnel. A lot of medical personnel have been trained across the country raising the number of uh, the people who are responding this, this way, to this pandemic. So that's it, basically. All right. Now, let's go to Ebony, where we read of alarm at rising cases, especially amongst top officials. You know, we are told that cases climbed to 75 cases out of 3,000 tests carried out. Is this percentage a cause for alarm? Yes, yes, it does. It does. It does call for alarm. Uh, <laughs> Because uh, at the beginning, Abinicio, Ebony wasn't recording a lot of cases. But suddenly now, Ebony is increasing uh, on a daily basis. So it calls for worry. 
to know what actually has happened or what is happening currently in Ebony State. Right. Now, what does the fact that these cases are showing up amongst the top officials say about what our containment strategy need to be? Yes, yes, because uh, the, the recent cases announced in Ebony, uh, most of them were among the, the, the political class. So, and uh, the reason may be obvious. Uh, they are more likely to meet people uh, for one thing or the other. People are more likely to meet them. Uh, when offices are shut down, the political offices are open. Uh, most of them fall within the elderly age group, so they are more likely. And uh, political testing also, uh, they are more likely to be tested than the lay men. So among the strategies that uh, can be used to curtail this spread in urban state is to re-emphasize and enforce the preventive practices vis-a-vis uh, -vis physical distancing, use of face masks, hand hygiene, cough etiquettes. These are key. And the offices that must not be open now actually be short number of the political for work for the engagements so that we can break the chain of transmission. Mm. Lastly, before I let you go, Dr. Akba, are patterns emerging as to the nature of the spread of the virus so far? Do you see, are there studies being carried out in that regard? Yes, yes, there, there, there are studies that are being carried out. There are a lot of studies. You know, this is a novel uh, issue. So and a lot of researches are ongoing. Some are already being published. You know that a lot of cases that we see now are actually asymptomatic cases and they are shedding the virus. But they are more dangerous than the symptomatic cases because normally they are in the community and they are interacting with people. They don't even know there is a problem yeah, with them and they are infecting others. And among the people they infect are people that can actually be symptomatic. So, so that, they, you know, it keeps evolving. Currently, a lot of people who are moving on the streets can actually be positive. You know, so, and that's why we need to step up our testing to shift from focusing on people who have histories that are linking them to you know, conducting some testing that is outside you know, people who are likely to come down. We can do some community testing and step up our testing. You can see that that may help us to actually pick these cases that are asymptomatic. So a lot of asymptomatic cases are presenting now, unlike what we had when the whole pandemic started. So that's a change in trend that should make us step up our testing. Right. Thank you so very much, Dr. Christian Akba, for your contribution this morning. Thank you. Thank you, too.